Thank you so much for coming on to the show, Dr. Vanita Rattan. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes. I definitely love your content. I discovered you years ago because I have melasma. So it's so great to see someone like yourself with so much knowledge coming onto YouTube and sharing that you know. So why don't you share with our listeners and viewers what inspired you to YouTube in the first place? Uh, so with YouTube, I just saw a lot of people giving misinformation. Uh, there were a lot of DIY skincare recipes that were burning skin and in particular skin of color was suffering the most because with us, our melanocytes are larger. Those are cells that produce a pigment melanin. And so once they're triggered, they then lead to hyperpigmentation. So I always say one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. And a lot of these DIY recipes had lemon juice or apple cider vinegar um, or bicarbonate of soda. And these things burn your skin and lead to pigmentation. And there was really no one advocating for skin of color and standing up uh, to this misinformation. And I wasn't even sure to be honest if people wanted to hear what I had to say. Um, so you do sort of, you know, you take that plunge, you come out your comfort zone and you just try. And the first few videos I made obviously did do very well. And then you start to improve, you get your format right. Um, and then you start to listen to your audience. The videos that do really well, you double down on. The videos that aren't doing so well, okay, you tried, but it didn't work. So it was a learning process and a journey. But I think the feedback ultimately that I got from followers and how quickly we grew, especially in the pandemic, it just gave me all the motivation in the world. I mean, I was posting five YouTube videos a week. Oh, wow. And this on top of Instagram, on top of TikTok, which I do daily, just because the need was so great. And there's so much I wanted to give that, you know, the two worked out. Did you immediately approach YouTube with the idea of it being something like a job, something full time? Because uploading five days a week at from the beginning, or was that later on when you started to take off? Uh, I'd say pretty close to the beginning, actually, within the first month, I realized that the reason I wasn't growing is because I wasn't uploading enough. I probably then took it to the extreme. And that's just my personality. <laughs> when I realized that, you know, when they say regular, they probably just mean three videos a week, but I went straight to five. I think I actually oh, started wow. with seven. But it, was a bit, it was a bit ridiculous. <laughs> and even my friends said, you know, Vanessa, we don't really need to see you every day. Yeah. So when your best friends start telling you that, you realize let's dial it back a little bit and <laughs> do fewer videos. Yeah. But um, it's an absolute full-time job. It Then I learned to batch my work. So I would script write uh, one day a week. And I've got I've got a thousand YouTube videos. Um, I have a, a spreadsheet of a thousand YouTube videos that I need to write. And I'm constantly adding to it based on feedback from viewers. And so it's easy for me just to, you know, my, my questions are already there. It's just easy. It takes me maybe an hour and a half to write one script out. So one day I could easily write out four. Um, and then one day a week I will film YouTube content. One day a week I film all my TikToks um, and Instagram. So for me, I think it's maybe a three and a half days a week job just doing social media. Are you editing the videos and doing the thumbnails and all that yourself? No, so thumbnails I outsource. Um, editing of YouTube videos I outsource to a very good company called VidChops, um, non-sponsored, it's just that I think they're brilliant. And I'd give them 20 videos a month and they would edit those. But everything from TikTok and Instagram, all my reels, I edit myself. Just because I feel like how you edit your reels makes a massive difference to your success. Whereas actually YouTube is a little bit different in that the quality of the content is what people are coming to you for. They have pain in a specific, a specific problem that they want you to solve. And it doesn't have to be quick and snappy. They actually want details. They want to go into the science of it. So actually the way you edit isn't as important as reels, for example. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so five days a week that that's that's a lot of that's a lot of content so I've just hit 600 YouTube videos yeah <laughs> oh my god so did you see um by uploading that often were you seeing the growth that you wanted when you started doing yeah. that kind of schedule yeah I think we were hitting about 50,000 followers a month at one point um, wow so that was incredible and that was during covid then it then it goes down to about 30,000 and now I think I'm probably at about 20,000 a month mm -hmm. um and I think it's because I've dropped down to three videos a week uh, you know if I went back to five videos you're going to see more growth it just 
you know, at some point you do need to take a little um, stock of your lifestyle and balance because yeah. you can become so obsessed with social media. It's so exciting. It's almost like you've gamified your work because instead of you having to work and seeing years later the, you know, the fruits of your labor, you could upload a video and within one hour, you know if you've done good, a good job or a bad job. You know, if you've helped people or if you haven't helped people, you know, you, you've gamified your work. And so mm-hmm. it's addictive. You know, I think I thoroughly enjoy it. I have to actually pull myself away from my work because I love it so much. But then I've also got children and they also need attention. So. Yeah. Yeah. So is YouTube and social media what you do full time as your career? So I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator. So okay. um, I wrote a book. I got my book with me. Yeah, I've got it here. So this is Skin Revolution. So mm-hmm. I, when I started YouTube, I realized there really was no information for skin of color. So I wrote this book for Harper Collins. I'll uh, just show you inside. And this t- this took me about a year and a half to do. So this is one of the things I was doing on the side. Mm. And then I was quite lucky because um, because. I had a big following I could ask my followers what they wanted and because I was simultaneously reviewing brands at this point I'd gone through 150 brands across the world the most popular brands and I knew exactly where the mistakes were I knew Mm -hmm. where the gaps were I knew what needed to be created and so then I started creating ranges for skin of color because I'm a formulator as well Mm -hmm. for example this is one of my ranges that I created this is actually for my own face but I created it for everybody else. It's a six-step skincare routine for, uh, for glowing um, skin and anti-aging and anti-hyperpigmentation. And the only reason I made it is because I had a follower Feedback, base. Yeah. And I, it's awesome. And mm-hmm. if they said, no, Dr. B, we don't want it, I wouldn't have made it. So it was, um, you know, it, it's a very fortunate position to have a community online mm-hmm. who want to help you. Yeah, because your channel so niche and you know your audience is so specific right so it's like exactly it's like yes this is what we want and you're like i'm gonna give it to you so were you exactly. doing when you first started your channel though is this is that what you were doing full time youtube yeah or- it's a good question yeah. i went big during social media during uh covid so what mm-hmm. happened is i had four clinics um around the uk and during COVID, we kept having lockdowns, shutdowns. And so mm. I was paying for rent and rates and staff, but I wasn't making any income. And, you know, I think it was by the third lockdown that I realized this, I don't know when this thing is going to end. And we're going to have to cut our losses at this point because we're just going to go bankrupt if we carry on like this. So I closed my clinics and I decided mm. I was going to put all my energy into social media. Wow, and that's a huge, that's, a, that's big to, to was shut really down scary. clinics really scary it's almost like you know when you it's, it's like when you have a black hole and you have sunk sunk cost mentality is when you would hold on to those clinics for dear life and you know hope that'll turn the corner but when you realize when you get to a point where you just think this doesn't feel like it's ever going to end and there has to be a better way it forces you to work 10 times harder so that's why I was uploading so much is because we know when your back's against the wall you will mm-hmm. fight and work. There's no limit that, you know, no human limit, especially when you've got children to pay for, you know, you are, will, you know, I would have done wow. 20 videos a week, you know, like there was yeah. no limit to how much I could have worked. So it was very different for me, I think, because I had huge responsibility. I couldn't afford to fail um, that I, and I have, I've got quite a strong work ethic that for me, uploading constantly was you know not such a huge problem for me but I can Uh, understand if you know if the circumstances were different and I maybe had a job or you know other things that were taking up my time maybe I wouldn't have been able to do it but just the way the circumstances were it was you know do or die you don't have a choice and you are going to work harder than anyone else to succeed so how how long did you have those clinics for before eight years long time. wow wow yeah. that that brings a lot of context to kind of where you're at and um mentality with it that's that's just crazy so at what point in your whole social media career did you say to yourself the best decision 
by showing those clinics? Like, when oh. did you feel, mm. okay, like this the right move? This was the moment. Okay, so I remember really clearly, actually, it was when I first launched, my first project was Lipex, Lip Pigmentation Kit for Skin of Color. So it's a three-piece kit. Um, and the, the reason I created it is because nothing else existed for lip hyperpigmentation with 10 tyrosinase inhibitors for skin of color. It just didn't exist. And I got asked all the time about it. Um, and it was something I wasn't treating in my clinic. So it, there was no conflict of interest. I could start with this while I'm closing the clinics and there's no conflict. Whereas in the clinic, I'm doing face, body and dark circles. So I wasn't sure if I want to make those kits because I still have the clinic. So that was my first product, but I couldn't afford to pay influencers. I couldn't afford to, you know, pay for marketing or anything. It had to come from organically from my followers who've asked me to make it. They've asked me, but are they going to buy it? That's a completely different question. You know, yes. saying you want something and then putting your money there is a whole other ball game. And I wasn't sure. And I gambled a huge amount of money uh, to do it. On, because you have there's a um, minimum order quantity so at mm -hmm. the time it was about I think seven to ten thousand minimum order quantity times three units right so you're looking at thirty thousand pieces on your first ever product that you know what you don't even know if you're going to sell one and so I just remember you know I did everything for it. I did YouTube videos I you know created my mailing list I did all the things that you're supposed to do in the run-up to a product launch and the day it launched, we, I think we'd sold about 20% of our stock in a day. Mm. And I, I, it was the best feeling in the world because it was, it just proved that there was something here that, you know, I've been working a year at this at this point. And, you know, I think that I can go further with it. So, um, and I didn't have to rely on anyone. That was the beauty of it is not having to rely on anybody but yourself, your own hard work. How many hours are you willing to put in um, and, and you reap your own rewards? And that was, the, I think for me, the beauty of influencers having their own brands is mm -hmm. that they can cater to their clientele, their followers. And you're thinking the same way already. There's a reason why they're drawn to you is they either like the way you think, they like the way you explain things. Um, and they're on the journey with you. You know, they will, my followers help me with the color of my packaging. They help me with do you want this plastic or this sustainable packaging and but the sustainable packaging isn't going to be as high quality as the plastic and it's going to cost a bit more are you sure you want this you know you get to ask them those tough questions yeah. that as a founder without that um cohort of people to ask um it's much more scary it's it, you know you are on your own with your decisions and you you know you uh, live and die by your sword, you know, whereas yeah. if you use economics, um, you get to harness that power. That's so cool. Wow. That's so, that's so, so cool. Um, so at that point, probably felt really good about what you were doing. And then with your YouTube channel, how did you then move forward with your YouTube in the sense of continuing to grow, but it sounded like you did decide at some point to taper down the number of videos. Yeah, so when I got doing. my deal for my book deal with HarperCollins, so when I signed that book deal, it was in January. Remember January the fourth, and I looked at my husband. And I thought this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I can make this the bible for skin of color, mm -hmm. and I intend to, but I can't do everything. I just can't do everything. Um, I'm going to have to take a step back from everything and commit to this book. I mean, this is, you know, it, yeah, it was uh, one of the hardest things I've ever done, I'd say. And it took me a good 12 weeks solid of writing. So mm -hmm. writing 12 hours a day for 12 oh, wow. weeks. And so there was no time for me to do any more YouTube or anything, really. Um, and so what I did was in the runner, um, I I blitzed out videos I think I've blitzed out uh three videos a week for 12 weeks in advance okay so I think I sat down with I made 50 videos and I just thought okay let me just release two or three a week for the next 12 weeks while I'm writing my book while and I don't have yeah. to think about it mm -hmm. uh, but even doing that like took all my energy it was one of those again most exhausting things because you know YouTube you're performing to millions of people say 
or you know tens of thousands of people but really you're on your own in a room talking to your camera phone but you have to have the by energy yeah, yeah by yourself yeah. and if anyone yeah. heard you outside they would think like <laughs> you've lost yeah. the plot um, yeah. but you have to bring that energy to every video so as if you're on stage performing and doing that 50 videos you know different content keeping interesting already exhausted me before I even hit the start line of writing the book yeah but it had to be done you know it was again it's like a, it was a do or die situation and so oh. you just get on with it wow that is just <laughs> I love Harry. I love just just the passion behind it, the will behind it, it's absolutely incredible. I know mm. we're, you know, you have a tight time frame, so I want to make sure we get to the last part of the interview where I just go through and I ask you very quickly the same questions I ask everyone that's come onto the show. So we'll just go go through them one by one. What would you say is your number one struggle with YouTube? Number one struggle with YouTube? There's a few. I would say number one is Content has to keep changing and keep evolving. You can't do the same content over and over. But mm -hmm. you get comfortable. So, for example, you could start doing shorts. At one point, I was doing shorts and I was hitting 50,000 subscribers a month. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had 10 million views in a month. It was just wow. astronomical. Uh, this was only two months ago. And now it's dropped down to 4 million views in the last month. And purely because shorts were doing really well one month and not so well the next month because more people get on the platform, more people realize there's opportunity here. And so, you know, supply and demand. So you have to keep evolving and often it doesn't work. It's like you have to keep reinventing yourself. I started off, you know, doing, going through brands and then after you've basically exhausted every brand, then what? Then I start doing skits. So, you know, when you're doing, when you're acting, so I enjoy acting anyway. And so for me, this is just, you know, <laughs> part extension Fine. of my personality. Mm -hmm. But again, you don't know if your followers are going to like that. You So far, they've seen your bedroom talking to your phone, and now here you are acting. <laughs> yeah. Then you start your dances on TikTok, and then, you you know, you're, you're doing different, you're reinventing yourself, and you don't know if people are going to enjoy it, hate it. You know, they've seen you in a white coat. Do they really want to see you doing TikTok dances? You know, you just don't know until you try, try and put the information out and see what happens and have a bit of a thick skin if people don't enjoy it you know i i, I respond often just say you know what? I, was, I was just giving it a go and seeing what you guys thought you know just be really honest about it and people mm -hmm. really enjoy that vulnerability that you're trying and sometimes you fail and sometimes it, it succeeds and then you go hard on that so i've just done a video i've just come back from new york today and I've done a whole shop with me series where I take you shopping, you know, buy this, not this. So if you've got dry lips, buy this, not this. If you've got dry feet, buy this, not this. Mm. And that style of content has done extremely well because those are the, the key questions you're asking when you go shopping is which mascara should I buy this, not this and why? Mm -hmm. And I'll talk about the ingredients in it. So that did well. And so then I went and made 20 of those videos. So you just double down on videos and what uh, works. formats that do well, you know. Yeah, and what doesn't? If you were to start over with your channel right now, what, if anything, would you do differently? Wow, what would I do differently? I would probably have forced myself to go back to five videos a week. I think I big. I think after I'd done the book, um, TikTok then blew up for me. So TikTok, I think that I'm on over seven hundred thousand followers on TikTok, and that happened much later than YouTube. And so I started spreading myself a bit thinner but I do think I maybe could have worked harder and gone back to five YouTube videos a week which is what my followers wanted um it, it just kept exhausting me <laughs> so that's cr that's it, exhausting it's really tiring I'm not gonna yeah. lie yeah so right now we're three a week uh so that's maybe something I would do a bit differently but I mean I think I think it's good to make mistakes, you know, it's good yeah, to learn from them. Yeah. I don't think I would have changed much really because I needed to make those mistakes in order to know what worked. So yeah. 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 Hard to answer. yeah I get that. What is your favorite video you created on your channel? Oh, there were a few. <laughs> My favorite video. I, I love making vlogs. So, you mm. know, 48 hours of me in New York, for example, it's a vlog coming out. Um, I did a really fun one on assumptions. So d assumptions you made about me, and they were hilarious. <laughs> so that's so much fun posting those. I love all my videos. You know the ones where 
because I'm non-sponsored, none of my videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored. That's very important. It means that I tend to get a lot of backs up. You know, a lot of company CEOs will message me, you know, to say, Dr. V, can we, can we chat? And, <laughs> you know, can I uh, send you more product or whatever? Because I'm non-sponsored, I get to be really honest. Mm. And I love that. I love the freedom to say, this is, this is useless. This $220 cream is not worth 10 pounds so I get to say that without any backlash because I'm non-sponsored so I think mm -hmm. that's what I love about my whole channel is just the freedom to say exactly how it is and not care yeah yeah I mean <laughs> truly authentic which is you know, that's what that's what your audience wants it's, yeah so what is your number one tip for preserving your mental health as a content creator oh I think that's a really good one a really good one and honestly I struggle with it because anytime you upload anything it's a piece of you and a piece of art mm -hmm. that you are putting out as well no matter what it is for me it's skincare mm -hmm. but for me it's still art the way I edit it and the way I put it out mm -hmm. the way I communicate if it's met with you know very low views it hurts it, it, you know and, and I I tend I release I don't know, 50 piece of content a week and so even if one fails or doesn't do well, you will fixate on it and it is very unhealthy. And then you, the other big problem is comparing yourself to other content creators mm -hmm. who, do, who are in the same field as you. You think, hold on, why are they growing faster than I am? And why, are, why did that video do better than mine? I think my mom was better. So I think number one is don't even look at other content creators if you can help it. You know, if you're doing it for market research, fine. But don't, as a daily thing, go and look at how many views they're getting and how many likes they're getting because yeah. comparison is is will destroy your creativity. It will destroy your confidence and it'll destroy your motivation. You won't even mm -hmm. be bothered to get up and put that effort in the next day, you know. So mm -hmm. I don't even look at anyone else's content unless you know, I'm doing market research, which will be once a month, you know, just to make sure what's everyone doing? Am I kind of on the same page as everyone else? Are we doing similar, you know, are we in the ballpark or am I doing something completely different to everybody else? You know, just yeah. market research, not as a comparison. Um, and then the other thing is give yourself a time limit. So literally put a buzzer on your phone because you can get sucked in to social media. You can be in it for three hours, having not eaten, not drunk, and not gone to the bathroom. And mm -hmm. you you don't even know where that time's gone. Or your kids are calling you and all they can see is your face and your phone. So give yourself a buzzer and give yourself family time and you time. So I spend two hours a day where I do two hours of walking every day. I listen to my audio book for two hours, completely away from social media. And I'm learning something completely new, yeah. filling my mind with something else. Because we all have 60,000 thoughts a day and either you are fixating on social media and comparison or you're growing and you're learning about something new. Mm -hmm. And just for human happiness, I think growth and uh, pushing yourself equals happiness. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of walks. I love walks and listening to I have to do it every day. That's a that's a big thing for me too. Have you ever to just give up on your YouTube channel? What happened there and what got you back on track? Not completely. I, I think the worst I've ever gone down to is one video a week. Mm. That was me failing, really epically failing. <laughs> that one video a week was like, you know, because I could film one video, four videos in a day. So that's mm -hmm. if I just do one day of work, that would have been a whole month of YouTube. Yeah. But a lot of people just do one video, you know, a week and that's normal. Mm -hmm. Um because I just started off at five, that coming down to one was such a big difference. Change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I've never really completely stopped. I think my followers would just not be happy with me at all if I stopped. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, no, <laughs> like we need banging more. On my door. I get 100 yeah. emails. It just wouldn't work out for me. <laughs> yeah. Any video you're really, really excited about for your channel, but it just didn't do well? I'm sure there are loads. <laughs> um yeah do you know what there was one I think uh, they asked me to do a lot of my followers asked me to do a luxury video luxury skincare video mm. and they'd asked me so many times that eventually I sat down and did it and That's I just fine. thought this gonna blow up yeah because mm -hmm. they've asked me hundreds of times to do this video it's gonna blow up and it did it it tanked and I just thought huh <laughs> I thought you guys watching this video <laughs> yeah, I know and that happens all the time where 
you know, you think something's going to do well and it doesn't. And then also the other way is something that took you two seconds to make, zero thought. For example, I was just came back from holiday. I did my, my in-flight skincare routine. Literally, I had four products in my bag. I just thought, oh, do you know what? Let me just put my phone here. Let me just show what I'm doing. And that video blew up. So, yeah. Like you just don't know. I did a video the other day. I was just in the car talking to my phone, just about my thoughts on a, a topic, and that did really well. You just can't predict. It's not even about how much effort you put into a video. Yeah, it's yeah. About how much people want to know about what you're talking about. What you're talking about. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, and last question is: What is your number one advice you would tell someone just starting out on YouTube? Okay, so those people starting out on YouTube tend to be younger i would say um the older generation unless they're really social social media social social media savvy it's not going to be something that they're going to get into they tend to be on facebook youtube you tend to get into if you have something to teach Mm -hmm. and you are solving problems for people who have pain those people are going to do extremely well because you now have searchable terms of say for example i have chronic back pain what do i do Anyone that's able to solve that through exercise or diet or uh, surgery, you know, whatever it is, those sorts of people are going to do very well because they're solving a problem. Um, So I would say YouTube is an incredible space for you if you want to teach and you want to, and education is important for you. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can just sort of come in, you know, do a couple of reels and be done. It's just not going to work. So you want to build a community. YouTube, I have such an incredible, powerful community that I, you know, very, very grateful for and um, probably closer than some of the other platforms because we all talk to Mm -hmm. each other every, you know, three times a week in the comment section. My comment section often hit 300, 400 comments and a lot of people just know each other from there. And then I've got a private Facebook group where a lot of people migrate to, to, Mm -hmm. you know, further their skincare journey and ask intimate questions so yeah I'd say if you want to build a community do it on YouTube if you have something Mm -hmm. to teach do it on YouTube but if you want to do it you have to commit and you have to be releasing minimum three videos a week at least for two years and the fourth thing I would say is before you even start write out 1,000 topics before you even pick up the camera and do it because often what people do is they might have ideas for the first five and then they run out of steam they run out of ideas the content hasn't really picked up because it takes six months to see any kind of traction or anything yeah. and you you cut your legs off before you even start the run so write out your thousand um, ideas and stop filming and don't stop filming for six months you know give yourself that six months to to see growth And that's pretty much it. I think, oh, the fifth thing is thumbnail. You can have an incredible video, but if your thumbnail is is not up to scratch and isn't going to be eye-catching and doesn't, you know, you want to keep it to four or five words. You want it to be bright colors, usually a face or an emotion that you're showing. Um, People should want to click on your thumbnail and go, what's going on? Uh, That's really important as well. So those are my five top tips. Love that. Well, Dr. Rattan, thank you so much for coming on to the show and sharing your story. I, that was saying about closing your clinics. I didn't even know about that. So, you know, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. For anybody that isn't familiar with you and your content, where can they find you? So I'm on YouTube at Dr. Mita Rattan, also on Instagram at Dr. At Dr. Mita Rattan and Skincare by Dr. V, and also on TikTok, Dr. Mita Rattan, and our private Facebook group, Dr. V Sock Family everywhere well thank you so much yeah we'll put all the links in the description below so you guys can go check her out and check out all her incredible content and thank you this is wonderful thank you so much i appreciate it all right bye bye i hope you enjoyed that interview and you learned a lot from it now if you have a youtube channel or considering starting a youtube channel that you're serious about growing and you want the best of the best when it comes to personalized feedback advice and up to the minute youtube strategy then consider my zero to influence youtube bootcamp for women 
I have been running this bootcamp since 2018 and we have hundreds upon hundreds of very successful students that have gone through the program. And I can go on and on about the YouTube bootcamp, but I wanted to hear it directly from some of the women themselves. I feel so lucky that I got to do Erica's bootcamp. Before I joined the bootcamp. Before I joined the bootcamp. Before joining Erica's bootcamp, my channel was all over the place. I didn't know what I was talking about. I would hear people say that I need to find my why and my voice and my audience and understand my target audience, but I never felt like I really understood what that meant. Erica helped me come up with YouTube video ideas. She helped me with consistency. She helps me to interpret my analytics. I started with 12,000 subscribers and now I have over 50,000 and it is growing rapidly. My channel has grown almost 100,000 subscribers. I definitely wouldn't have gotten to this place in such a short amount of time without Erica's bootcamp. What makes Erica special is that she has been talking to and analyzing YouTube channels for years and that has given her this bank of knowledge to pull from. I'm constantly asking her questions about YouTube. I'm asking her advice about my YouTube channel. Taking the Zero to Influence YouTube Bootcamp was one of the best. The best, the best decision I could have ever, 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 ever made for myself, for my channel, for my own personal growth as a human being. I could not be happier. I love that it has reinvigorated me in such a beautiful way. So I am so, 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 so happy that I've joined. You're crazy not to hire her. Get on it. All right. <laughs>